You know, Web3 has brought us so many amazing innovations like NFTs and cryptocurrency, but out of everything that gets discussed today, there's one opportunity that I would put above all others and it just doesn't get talked about enough. That is getting a Web3 domain. Now, you might scoff at that and think that this is some sort of a kitschy attempt to feed off of the Web3 craze, but I promise you it is so much more than that. So today, I'm gonna tell you exactly what these are, what the opportunity is right now, and why you definitely want them for their future potential as well. My name is Trent Canelli. I'm a Web3 marketing strategist, and this is the best place for you to learn about Web3, NFTs, and how to market it all. So if that sounds good to you and you're excited, make sure that you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're into it. Comment to let me know whether you've bought your domain yet and what you've been able to do with it. I would love to know if you can find a way to put it in the comments without it getting spam blocked or whatever. I would love to see it. Please do share it. But until then, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk about what these things are. A Web3 domain is a new style of domain name that's decentralized and blockchain based. And as with seemingly everything, we have to kind of go back in time to understand this a little bit better. So right now, and really for the entirety of the history of the internet so far, domains have been under the control of ICANN, I-C-A-N-N. -N. It is a nonprofit organization designed to ensure the internet and domains are accessible the world over. But there is a big problem with this model. That problem is the fact that under ICANN, you can never actually own your own domain. It's not yours to have. In fact, nobody gets to own their own domain. Let's be really clear here. Meta doesn't own their own domain. Google doesn't. Amazon doesn't nobody and this has been the way it is for so long that nobody seems to blink an eye at it I mean this is why we have these situations every once in a while where some company will forget to re-up their domain some pirate will notice it and then they'll grab the domain really quickly for 20 bucks or something and hijack the whole company until the person pays them back to get their domain back in their own ownership get off my plane so that has been a thing that happens for a while nobody really blinks because this is kind of how it is or at least that's how it was until Web3 domains became a thing. But okay, we've had hundreds of different domain options forever, right? It's not just .com, it's .io, .net, .org, .tv, .puppies, .supplies. The, the list goes on forever, right? So what makes this one different? Well, that's actually where this gets really interesting because Web3 domains like .nft, .crypto, and .eth, they work outside of that ICANN ecosystem. And beyond that, they are, of course, blockchain based. So you can register or buy your domain right now and it's yours. It's written on the blockchain and it works with you and your wallet theoretically forever. Okay, great, so that makes sense, but what's the actual opportunity being offered here, right? I mean, we've got .coms, .ios, they all get us to websites and they function on the websites. There's not a lot of difference between them. How is a .eth or a .crypto different, okay? I mean, so far, all we've seen on Twitter and elsewhere are people identifying themselves by their .eth domains, like Vitalik Buterin, who created Ethereum, whose Twitter name is Vitalik.eth. And I know that this sounds ridiculous, but that is one big reason to use a Web3 domain right now. So Web3 people are still in the minority, which means that the community is still building itself up and looking for those people who are in. And Web3 domains are a badge that you are one of them. One of us. You are part of that community and you are looking to move forward as a Web3 user. But I know that's a pretty weak reason to get a Web3 domain, so let me add a little more juice here. So first off, with the exception of pretty well-integrated wallets like MetaMask, it's very hard to make crypto payments throughout the internet today. Most sites don't have crypto payments set up. Uh, there's MetaMask that's very easy to set up, but most people don't have wallets and all of this confusing stuff, right? But Web3 domains, by their very nature, have crypto payments baked into them. They're adding that layer that's gonna make crypto payments more ubiquitous on the web, throughout the web, than ever before. But what's most impressive, I have to say, about Web3 domains in general, is the fact that a Web3 domain is like owning your own piece of the internet. Because remember, the internet under Web3 is blockchain-based, so you're buying something on this blockchain that irrefutably demonstrates your ownership. And the proof of how this works is in NFTs. Let's just look at those. So check out this video for lots of details on NFTs. But for our purposes, NFTs are blockchain-based digital stuff, right? They're most most well known for their art like CryptoPunks and Board Ape Yacht Club, but there's also PTE games, there's wearables and metaverses, really anything that you can think of in a digital space to own can have an individual ownership position with NFTs 
on a blockchain, right? Owning your domain is the exact same thing. Now that said, it's really important to consider where we are today with the implementation of this thing. So it would be great to believe that you could get a .eth domain and anybody from any web browser from Chrome to the Internet Explorer that 90 year olds are using could access the site. But that unfortunately is not the case. Right now, Web3 domains work with our typical Web3 systems but not very far beyond that. So you're gonna find that you can access .eth and .crypto pages on a browser like Web3's Brave browser, but getting that same access on Chrome isn't really possible. It's gonna be a lot harder to do. And one last big weakness I really think that we need to highlight, I just can't sugarcoat this, is website flexibility. So what do I mean by that? I mean that the infrastructure just isn't quite there yet to support complex and dynamic websites. So just consider that like all blockchain-based technologies, the information for your domain is scattered across different servers the world over, which means that it takes longer to get that information to the user's computer than it does in a normal centralized situation. Now, the basics of Web2 page building are still there, including HTML, CSS, Bootstrap, that sort of stuff. But there is a clear weakness here that is a weakness of all decentralization. Yes, it's more secure and it's more free, but it's also harder to recompile that information because it's in so many different places. It just takes longer. So I've given you a lot of conflicting things to think about when it comes to Web3 domains, which is possibly going to lead you to asking that ultimate question, should you bother to buy one? And the answer to that question kind of depends. It isn't straightforward to answer because you need to look at your business and what your business is doing to make that determination. So for instance, if you're a traditional retailer that sells like bagels or something, you might not need to go through this just yet. Because the reality of your situation is that you're pulling in a lot of foot traffic and local customers. You don't need that technical edge that Web3 is providing. Now, what if you're an e-commerce brand? Well, you're getting a lot closer to necessity here because the idea is that you have freedom of movement, which allows you other ways to take payments from people, among other things, right? There's lots of monetization options with Web3 domains. A Web3 domain would definitely allow you to do those things in a way that Web2 domains just don't. Ultimately, the question that you're trying to answer is what Web3 domains are going to provide you now and in the future. But we really haven't even touched on the future much yet, so let's dive into that now before we go. Because in addition to all the cool benefits that you can currently get from working in Web3 domains, there's really no limit to where it's going. And honestly, if you miss it, it's going to be a big deal. Because the whole goal of the Ethereum name service, aka the ENS, is to make blockchain and crypto more accessible. That's where you get a lot of these domain names. I mean, just look at how internet usage started in general to kind of understand this better. First, it was a few people who were obsessed with the idea of it. They built the first apps, they learned all the technical stuff, and really created that programmatic infrastructure of everything that you can do today. You can easily argue that Web3 domains and the ENS are in the same boat right now. Most people haven't yet seen the use case for Web3 domains. I don't get it. And the majority of the work that's being done in Web3 is highly technical in nature. But even that non-technical stuff is still sort of complex if you step back and look at it. You still have to use a wallet for everything. You have to attach that wallet to the right sites. You have to be careful not to get fished. You have to understand how Web3 works before diving too deep into it or you're gonna get hurt. Just look at play to earn gaming again. These are games that without a crypto basis, they would not be far from the in-browser games that we saw 10 to 15 years ago on Flash websites all the time, right? And while the ability to earn money while playing games is very attractive to the user base, many, many people are still not participating because they don't understand how it works. And frankly, they don't want to try and understand how it works. So what gets us over this hurdle? It's got to be exposure and normalization. People of all ages 30 years ago had to take classes on typing. Now it's a natural part of early schooling. This is one of those things that it almost seems wild to hear that someone cannot do nowadays. You can't type, what is that about, right? The future of Web3 is gonna need to go through that same transition. Getting people used to how to set all this up while using language and strategies that are easy to digest and easy to execute on. We need to make this simple for everybody or it's not gonna take off. But it can be made simple once we get past this technical phase. So there you go, there is so much that can be accomplished with Web3 domains. But I really think that you shouldn't just get it for today. You also need to think about the future use cases. There is so much that is going to happen with Web3 domains. I really, really encourage you to grab yours now. So let me know whether you've grabbed yours yet. I would love to know. And let me know what you've done with it. If you can find a YouTube-friendly way to do it, I would even love for you to put your link in the comments so I can check it out. Please 
please do so. Otherwise, make sure that you like this video. Subscribe to my channel if you're into it, and I will catch you in the next one.